episode number 711, 711, you heard that right, of Let There Be Talk, and welcome to the show. It is a Monday, and uh, it's really Sunday for me, because I'm recording this on Sunday, and then I, I make it look like it's Monday. Hey man, just waking up here doing the podcast, but it's fucking Sunday, and I was getting ready to start the podcast. I'm out here bracing for the hurricane, Hurricane Hillary. And I'm just about to start and a fucking earthquake hits. Gertie immediately barks and my place just did a fucking whoa. And I was like, holy shit, earthquake, hurricane. I just kept hearing that tool song. Better swim, better swim, better swim. <laughs> Welcome to the show. It is fucking nuts in the world. It is nuts in the world. I keep saying I eat clean and exercise and try to stay healthy so I can live about another 20 years to see how this fucker ends, man. <laughs> it is, it is crazy. It gets crazier every day in this world man there ain't no global warming man that's a bunch of fucking bullshit ha. all right keep telling yourself that my friends you oil sellers you oil sellers let me put my tinfoil hat on here and tell you the world goes in ups and downs and ebb and flows and uh the world's flat and then it's round then it's fucking <laughs> i don't know Anyway, all I do know is I'm 57 and there's never been a hurricane in California and you get an earthquake. You know, before I was always like, oh, I've never lived in Florida or, you know, any of the, those hurricane areas because uh, they get them every fucking year and you get an earthquake like once every 10, 20 years, a big one, you know, like I lived through the 89 one. And then I think 92 was the Lama Lola, uh, Lama Lola, Lola, whatever it was, uh, in L.A. But this was crazy. Just sitting here, pouring rain, and then a fucking quake. L.A. has lost its mind, too. I went to the grocery store last night uh, after uh, I did a spot at the comedy store. And I thought, well, I'll stop at the grocery store at 9 o'clock. There's never anybody there on a Saturday night. I'll stop in, get some fruit, grab some sparkling waters, and get ready for a, a day, a Sunday, you know? And I go in there, and there's like a fucking hundred people in the grocery store. And it doesn't even hit me at first. I'm still going over notes in my head about my set. Like, oh, fuck, I forgot to put that joke in there. And this is it, eh, you know? I'm just kind of going there. And then I start looking around. And I'm like, hey, what the fuck are all these people doing in the grocery store? And then I go to get some fruit and there's no fucking fruit. There's no strawberries. There's no blueberries. There's a million bananas. I guess L.A. does not eat bananas. Probably uh, that'll make me fat. But there was no strawberries. There's no blueberries. And the cotton candy grapes were fucking gone. The new Delray favorite ever since uh, I had them in Seattle a couple of years ago. There was no fruit. I'm like, what the fuck? And then I turned the aisle to get some sparkling water. And uh, there was no fucking, there was no water. There's no toilet paper. It was COVID all over again. People had lost their mind. They're like, the hurricane's coming. Oh man, Governor Greasy has declared California a state of uh, emergency. I better go get shit. <laughs> fucking, it's just fucking raining. Right now, you know, that's it. It's fucking raining. There's zero wind, thank God. And, uh, you know, uh, people have lost their minds. Anyway, so I don't know. I'm just here and I'm ready to podcast for you guys on this uh, crazy weekend. And it was a, it was a, a interesting weekend. Um, it was the third, I think it was the third annual 818, maybe the second one, but Brody passed away, Brody Stevens, good friend of mine and a, a 
a solid human and everybody's favorite in the comedy community passed away three and a half years ago. And he always had this bit 818 till I die. 818 is the Valley's uh, prefix back in the day. Remember that back in the day, each kind of area had their own prefix. Los Angeles was 213 and 818. That is it. New York was 212, San Fran was 415, Sacramento 916. I'm just naming the ones I know. And that's it forever. And then LA got bigger and they kind of uh, got 310 in there and then 323 and just all kinds of bullshit now. New York's got all different ones. Anyway, Brody uh, loved the Valley, Reseda, where he uh, grew up. And he would always say 818 till I die. So August 18th is 818. And uh, Tommy Godlove uh, created this uh, 818 day and got Reseda to recognize it. And of course, uh, that created the great Brody Stevens uh, day, which is just beautiful, beautiful, you know? And last year they, uh, you know, revealed the the amazing... Uh, mural of them out in Reseda. I was there for that and did the show last year, did it this year. This year was fun. It was, uh, let's see, who was on that? It was Dane, Dane Cook, Marin, me, um, oh, Byron Bowers, uh, Jeff Garland, and uh, who else was on that? I thought the Sklar brothers were on, but I guess they weren't. Anyway, it was a it was a big night of comedy at the store in the main room. Beautiful. Always uh, great to see Brody's mom. She was there and she had the, the kick-ass booth watching the comedy. Somebody had painted a, an amazing painting of Brody that they were auctioning off. And just a beautiful night of comedy at the store. And I had so much fun doing a set. I, you know, a lot of times when I start to get loose on stage, I think of Brody because he was just so free up there. He had bits, but he also would just riff with the crowd. And, and it was just kind of like a, an amazing one man show of Brody. Great. He would have some mini meltdowns. Uh, he would yell and scream. He would laugh. He would play uh, drums on a stool. It was just a, it was just a complete amazing performance art and people that saw them that didn't know who they were, they never forgot it. And that's a, that's a kind of a performance you want to be able to uh, deliver when people leave, they, they go like, I don't know what I just saw, but it was fantastic. Or maybe they hated it, which is even cool too. They're like, I didn't like that at all. That guy was crazy. And then, but they're still talking about it. And uh, that kind of, uh, that's the kind of uh, performer you want to be. Like Mitzi Shore used to always say, the great Mitzi Shore would say, you want half the people to hate you and half to love you. And then you're going to be very successful. And I will tell you this right now, as a, uh, a, a performer, a comedian, an artist, a podcaster, that half that hate you, I guess you need that. But, uh, oh man. Yeah, fuck those guys. <laughs> anyway, I love you, Brody. Long live Brody Stevens. We didn't get to do the uh, softball game. We were going to have a softball game today and a Brody Stevens walk around the park and uh, where his bench is. There's a bench out there. But we didn't get to do that because of the hurricane slash earthquake slash cocaine bear slash uh sharknado <laughs> fucking nutty movies are coming true anyway so there it is the great brody stevens love you brother yes yes if you haven't seen any of the brody clips i i i highly recommend you youtube brody stevens and just enjoy yourself for a couple hours and, and watch some very original, original stuff, man. Uh, another thing happening today is the legendary Mr. Robert Plant's birthday, 75. 
it's amazing Robert Plant's only 75 because I yeah, I always picture him as uh maybe around 80 uh, uh in the last few years because he's just not because he looks old or anything but more like he's just been in my life for what feels like a zillion years in everybody's life he's been on stage about three quarters of his life and uh non-stop performing 75 still doing it at a high level doing those allison krauss tours this guy is uh it's unreal his career if you think about it because he's in the biggest band in the world john bonham passes away they don't want to do it anymore and then he starts a solo career and his solo career was very fucking successful still is you know grammys uh massive ticket sales a lot of hits in those early days man little by little uh, i mean man his solo stuff totally different than zeppelin um kind of a lot of the solo stuff sounded where they zeppelin were on that all of my love and through the outdoor record which i really fucking like and some people don't dig it but i was way into it it was it was the mature led zeppelin this is a uh, Led Zeppelin as adults, but uh, I really like In Through the Outdoor. And then I like a lot of uh, Plant solo songs. And uh, I went to see Plant. I remember in 1988, Now in Zen Tour, Shoreline. And I was put on the guest list. Me and a friend went. And we were all fired up. The Shoreline is an outdoor amphitheater in... Um, it kind of right before San Jose, Santa Clara, right around there where the new 49ers stadium is. It was built for the Grateful Dead, basically to play their summer shows on an old dump. It's an old landfill. And I've I told the story before, but the first year people would be smoking cigarettes and they just throw them on the lawn and <laughs> methane gas would just ignite. People are just sitting there on their blankets like, what the fuck? You're watching, you're watching like Soundgarden. <laughs> anyway, uh, so I went to see Robert Plant and I was on the list. And I was all fired up. And when we got there, we found out that we had lawn seats and it was just lawn was, you know, L for loser. Like you just saw the L meaning lawn on your ticket. And you were just like, oh, lawn. I mean, lawn is where you went when you just had no fucking money or connections and you just sat way the fuck up in the lawn and watched the concert on video screens. It's not even like you're not even in it. Amazing that these places uh, have been built over the years and it was just a way to like, okay, we can have like 7,500 seats, but we can put another 20,000 on the lawn. And I never forget it. Me and my buddy, he's like, ah, oh, we're just a couple fools on the hill. Fool on the hill, big log. <laughs> we were just, we were up there. We were just miserable. But we stayed the whole time to see Robert Plant. We were such Zeppelin plant fans and stuff. We were just like, I mean, when somebody puts you on the list. It's it's totally cool. Thank you. Which the guest list doesn't really happen much anymore because the bands sell their tours to Live Nation. That's how it works these days. <clears throat> Excuse me. They go on tour and Live Nation goes, okay, we're going to give you, you know, $2 million for your tour. And that's just like a flat rate. And then that's what they get. And if the band needs guest tickets, they have to buy them because the tour was bought by Live Nation and Live Nation needs to sell those seats. That's how it happens. So in the old days, they'd just be like, oh, hey, we're coming to town. You, you want to come out? A couple guests. And you get some cool fucking seats. The guest seats were always around the seventh row. And you would know you were in the guest seats because you'd be sitting next to other people that you knew or family members. One time I was on the guest list for Black Crows Oasis. I was sitting next to Goldie Hawn. And, uh, 
you know, because Chris was married to uh, to uh, Katie. Uh, and so, you know, you just it's always like a great row or great seat. But now it doesn't really happen. Like people are like, hey, you're going to go to Metallica? And it's like, well, I said it before. I don't know how to buy tickets anymore because you go on and you're like, oh, these are like a million dollars. So and I'm not going to hit up the band because I know that they're going to pay for it. It's like, hey, dude, that's just a that's just a weird thing. Like now, if they reach out and go, hey, we're in town, you should come down. Then I fucking go. But I don't really want to reach out to somebody and be that person like, hey, man, can you get me on plus one? <laughs> you know, when people hit me up about the list, I go, yeah, and I just go solo. All I need is one, dude. I understand you only get a few. Uh, you know, that is that is fucking how it happens, which, by the way, uh, you know, I wanted to say this uh, mind blow. Uh, hold on. I'll tell that story in a minute because it's fucking pretty cool story. But anyway, plant. I think that if somebody puts you on the list these days, they should warn you if uh, if you're going to be on the lawn or not good seats. I I know Nikki Six. He got me some tickets to go to that uh, that stadium tour. And then when I found out they were just kind of out with the people, I just gave them to Ian because I was like, ah, I'm, I'm not like some fucking uh, diva or anything. But I just I've been to a million shows and I can't be out there with the beer spillers, you know, fucking yeah, you know, and the the long lines. I just did it for um for Dead and Co because I was I'm into getting into that situation. You're at a Dead and Co show. It's gonna be some cool people out there that are just like chill. But you get to like a Motley Crew crowd and you're just all right, dude. Fucking, I'm old, man. I'm fucking old. I wear nice clothes. I don't like shit spilled on it. I don't like cigarettes. I've turned into that fucking grumpy old man. I'm not a grumpy old man, actually. That's not true. I just, uh, I, you know, I, I, I'm into comfort. I'm into comfort, man. I like to, I got used to the side of the stage, watching the band, just enjoying, looking at the guitars, they're switching, checking out other stuff, watching the crowd from afar. I, I'm into that. And, and also I go to the shows mostly for the hang now to see old friends, because I've seen all these bands. I've seen all the bands, so I'm mostly there for the hang. So um, <laughs> if you're on the list, man, it's like, and that's even weird. They go, hey, I put you on the list. You're like, well, where where am I? Do I got good seats or am I on the lawn? That's a weird fucking thing, right? Am I on the lawn or or do I got backstage pass? Do I got parking? Hey, do I got parking, man? <laughs> These are all fucking big deal. Parking is a hundred bucks. Parking is a fucking, uh, man, I sound like a fucking asshole today, all right? I just... I'm just being honest, though, man. It's so hard to go to concerts as you get older. You're just kind of like, oh, the bathroom line. Oh, man. What if I got a shit? I got a shit at the arena. Oh, <laughs> I was at the fucking uh, I was at the farmer's market earlier this morning drinking coffee and a shit came on and I was rolling the dice, man. I was like, do I try to get some fruit? Or do I just go home and I rolled the dice and, you know, I was doing the old ignore it for a while. I could make it go away. <laughs> and I got the fruit and I fucking burned rubber home. Oh, man. The shit. Oh. Whenever I hear the sinner by Judas Priest, I, I, I use I sing it as the shitter. The shit. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. <laughs> God damn, that's a high note. Shit. Oh. And I'm fucking crazy today, man. The earthquake fucking, it rocked me, man. It turned me into a fucking grump. Tomorrow I'll be like, oh, I didn't mean any of that shit, man. I was just fucking, uh, yeah, I'll go to a concert. I don't give a fuck. But today, that's where I'm at. <laughs> shit. Oh. oh. So Robert Plant, 
happy 75th birthday, man. This guy, the Honey Drippers, Allison Krauss, Robert Plant, Zeppelin, um, the Page Plant. Uh, what was that? The Joy one. Uh, tons of fucking killer shit Robert Plant's done over his career. You know, Robert Plant's solo career is totally, of course, overshadowed, uh, overshadowed by the massive Led Zeppelin uh, career. I mean, of course, anything Robert's going to do is overshadowed by Zeppelin. But if you think about P Robert Plant's solo career, if it was my career, people would be like, God damn, this guy's fucking huge. He's been huge for years, man, with all these radio hits and, you know, Grammys and stuff. It's funny how successful he's been. And still people are like, yeah, let's talk Led Zeppelin. Of course, if I had Paige on, or Plan on, I'd have to talk to him about Zeppelin. And uh, But I would also talk to him about his solo career because there's so much great stuff he's done. But wild, right? Anybody else have uh, Robert Plant's solo career? They'd be considered just a fucking uh, superstar. Like, I'm surprised Robert Plant has not been inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame as a solo artist. Uh, not that I know of, really, but I, I think that he could easily go in as a solo artist with uh, all of the uh, amazing hits that he's had. Anyway, happy birthday, 75, Robert Plant. You've been working your whole fucking time. Meanwhile, Jimmy Page has only done a few things since Zeppelin. I think Jimmy, you know, Robert spent that time of, running away from Zeppelin like hey man I'm more uh than that you know I'm more than just Zeppelin and I think Jimmy Page is like I am Zeppelin which I respect both angles both angles uh I I understand you know it's tough to you know Jimmy had the firm and uh Outrider and he's done some stuff but uh Jimmy is Zeppelin if you think about it and thinking about that, what happened was today I uh, I was on surfing around YouTube to find a perfect clip to put up of uh, Robert Plant. I posted it up on um, on Instagram, and man, did it get flagged instantly! Anything you put up a Zeppelin is just boom flagged right away. So uh, I was putting up the ocean, which was live from Madison Square Garden, and that is the song remains the same one of the greatest rock concert films ever hands down and there's so much folklore of the song remains the same and so much myths and so much uh craziness surrounding the filming of that the release of that and everything that uh happened around that concert and it is really kind of my first introduction to the Madison Square Garden. And I remember watching that thing in a late night, midnight movie in Santa Rosa, California on 4th Street. There's a movie theater there. I think it's still there. And I went to the midnight movies to see the song remains the same. Fell in love with Dazed and Confused from the movie. And I, I just told this story recently where the neighbor, I borrowed the neighbor's uh, Song Remains the Same soundtrack and never gave it back. <laughs> but that was my kind of introductory to the Madison Square Garden non-sports. Up until that, you know the garden as a sport venue. Boxing, basketball. It was a huge sporting venue. It still is. But it was my introduction to it as rock and roll. And I always thought to myself, playing music all those years, I was like, you know what, man? Fuck, I got to play. I got to play Madison Square Garden. That is the fucking crown jewel of rock and roll. The Garden, the Forum, Red Rocks, those are the three in America, the crown jewels. Now, the Cow Palace, it's a course, means a lot to me, but that's more nostalgic because 
of where I grew up and all the shows I saw on there. But when you looked at the, the high level of prestige of the garden, the forum and red rocks, those were the venues. And I, I, I got to do red rocks uh, as a comedian not as a musician, but as a comedian, which actually means fucking more to me. To do these venues as a comedian means so fucking much to me because I wasn't even doing comedy 14 years ago. I was fucking selling motorcycles in Van Nuys, California in 110 degree weather, pushing out fucking ultra classics in the sun so some guy could see the sparkle on the paint job, just burning up, getting melanoma standing there while the guy goes, I don't know, is that pearlescent white or is that is that silver? Can we pull out the silver one next to it and, and just see? You know, I better go home and ask my wife if I can get this motorcycle. You ain't getting a fucking motorcycle. If you got to ask your wife, you ain't getting shit. <laughs> that's what I wanted to say to those guys always said, get the fuck out of here you ain't buying shit anyway my point is to do comedy at the Red Rocks and the LA Forum I did the Forum twice and I did that because Mr. Bill Burr has, uh, asked me to open for him and you got to think about all that hard work that Bill put in in his career to get to that fucking level. And at the meantime, I'm busting my ass just trying to get booked as a headliner in America. And and then he's sharing that experience with me and just blowing my fucking mind, you know? So Saturday yesterday because it's sunday but at the podcast is out on monday so uh, anyway a couple days ago <laughs> the illusion that this is recorded on a monday like i said anyway saturday i get a, a call from bill he says hey man you at home i go yeah he goes i'm gonna stop by and i go okay cool and he came by and he, he brought me over a fucking kick-ass Jaws shirt from Martha's Vineyard. That's where Jaws was filmed. I have still not made it out to Martha's Vineyard. I've been dying to go one year to the Jaws weekend. They do like a kind of a Jaws weekend or week out there. And uh, I've always wanted to go there and just to see those locations and just take it in. You know, Jaws just being in the top five film ever for me. So he brings me over this beautiful, cool shirt, man. It's like Jaws. What's it say? I got it right here. It's uh, Jaws, Martha's Vineyard. And it's just the cool, it's the drawing of the shark from um, Home of Jaws, Martha Vineyards, from when um, they, uh, they have uh, the meeting, the town meeting, and Quint goes down there. Y'all know who I am. You know how I make a living? I'll catch the shark for five, but I'll find him and kill him for 20, whatever it is. Uh, which, by the way, side note, the uh, Jaws play is going on on Broadway in New York. I must see this. I've got to see it. It's got Quint's son in it, Robert Shaw's son in it, and man, it looks fucking great. So he comes over, he gives me the T-shirt, we're hanging out, we're talking, we're just hanging, laughing. I hadn't seen Bill in a month because he's been on vacation. It was great to fucking see him. And he's like, I got to get out of here. And as he gets up, he's walking out of my house and nonchalantly goes, oh, hey, you want to do the garden with me? <laughs> I, fucking, I, I got goosebumps right now. Every time, the way he did it, the fucking nonchalant, just throw it off the cuff. It was beautiful. It was beautiful. And I just, I, I, got, I got fucking like tears in my eyes, man. And, you know, I, I just, I, 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 it was just the best fucking way. Oh, hey, man, you want to do the garden with me? And <laughs> I was like, nah. 
<laughs> Can you imagine if I said, nah, man, I'm good. Fuck. I just said like, what the fuck? And then he just walked down the street and just, I was like, dude, I'm, I can't be fucking believe it. I even texted him like, dude, I can't believe it. So I'm going to do the garden. And, and man, I, I mean, I got to tell you, man, there's just nothing more mind boggling to me than doing the garden stand up comedy, New York City, March 10th for the New York Comedy Festival. Unfucking believable, man. And thank you, Bill. Thank you so much. And also thank all of you people out there for your like kind words and, and support and coming out and, you know, seeing comedy, see me do comedy. It keeps me going. I love what I do. I do have low points in my life. That's just part of fucking doing art. I get it. And it is a marathon, not a sprint, as they fucking say, the old cliche. I'm here. I'm not going nowhere. I love doing stand-up. And uh, man, I'm closing out 2023 at the Garden. No matter whatever happens in my career, I've already made it, man. I made it the day they painted my, my name on that comedy store wall. That was the day I made it because I had no expectations at all. I was just, I'm doing comedy. I'm 44. I want to try some comedy. I want to do this. I've always wanted to do it in my life. And fucking here I am 14 years later. I'm about to do Madison Square Garden. And each time I do one of these venues, I just keep thinking, I need to get back here and headline this fucker. You know what I mean? Get there and uh, and, and head. And that's a, that's a fucking lofty goal, but it's just fucking, you know, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta have some goals. Anyway, so uh, it's gonna be interesting being in there. I was there last time Bill did it. It was great. Hung out with him. Got to see him uh, take that all in, man. It, it was in the round and uh, Verzi opened for him, Paul Verzi. I was fucking happy. Verzi, New York guy. So very cool. And I, I did the form, me being a California guy. And I was happy for all of us. We're like, fuck, man, this is just cool. We're doing comedy in, in arenas, man. It's fucking crazy. So it's going to be really wild to uh, go back there and this time perform and be on the stage and look out at that same kind of uh, that 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 view that Robert Plant, Jimmy Page, Bonzo, John Paul Jones, that same view they had back in that. Uh, man, those guys, Zeppelin, just selling that shit out like three nights all the time, just selling out the garden, full takeover of New York coming into town, renting like six floors of a hotel, just rampaging through New York City. I love it. I love it, man. Comedy and rock and roll. They fucking, they are up there, man. So that's a little uh, cool announcement there. A little cool announcement. And uh, also, I, I got some headlining shows coming up. I'm going to be at La Jolla Comedy Store. I'm fired up for that. Uh, that's coming up September, what, eight, nine, 10. I'm going to be in Utah at the, uh, a club that is quickly becoming, uh, people's favorites, boxcar comedy, and then a brand new club. I'm looking forward to doing out in, uh, Colorado Springs called, uh, the funny pages. These are headlining shows. I'm out headlining and, uh, looking forward to that. So that's pretty fucking cool. What else we got, my friends? What else we got? We got a Patreon. We got a new Patreon, Jeff Howell. Thank you for joining the Patreon. If you want to join the Patreon, people, it is patreon.com slash Dean Del Rey. And uh, there's about 140 bonus episodes on there. And also, <clears throat> I do live Zooms all the time on there, which is pretty fucking cool. You can Zoom and get on with me and talk about movies and stuff. So, Jeff Howell, thank you for uh, joining the Patreon. Also, this episode is brought to you by Banker 
guitars. Banker guitars, boutique guitars, handmade by my man, Matt Banker. Matt Banker. <laughs> Mr. Banker. Go to bankerguitars.com, get in your order, and get a handmade, beautiful guitar by this man. He does uh, Karina V's, Karina Explores. He does uh, these Archtop SG's that I see that uh, Brent Hines is playing at Mastodon. Scott Holiday's rocking the bankers from uh, Rival Sons. A lot of people playing the bankers out there. Charlie from uh, Drive-By Truckers. Uh, of course, Marcus King. He is a banker king. He's a banker king. <laughs> Marcus King tearing it up out there. Still on the road. I think about it. I was on tour with him uh, coming up on a year ago, and he's still out there crushing it right now with Chris Stapleton. Sounding fucking better than ever, man. I love that guy. He's not burning out. He is getting better and better. And I can't wait for his new record to come out. Also, Rival Sons just dropped a new single, which is pretty fucking cool. They got another record coming out. Anyway, bankerguitars.com. Follow them on Instagram also. And this episode is also brought to you by Migos Dog. Clean dog food for your dog. If you live in Los Angeles, they'll deliver it to your house or you can get it at Healthy Spot or Air One Supermarkets. And uh, Migos Dog is 100% human-grade food, handmade out in Malibu, California. Just kick ass. And uh, great people, great food. No fucking sawdust in your dog food. That's evil. If you're feeding it kibble from China, it's got sawdust and other junk in there. There's no regulations on dog food. So you have no idea what you're giving your dog. That's why I recommend you get Migos Dog, MigosDog.com. Get it? All right. Back into the show, my fucking mates. I'll tell you this right now. Um, what was I going to? Oh, this is what I've been doing. I am obsessed with becoming a minimalist. I keep trying to do it every year and I'm whittling down the shit. And I, over the last 35 years, have uh, amassed a huge collection of rock and roll memorabilia. And I'm, I'm ready to let it go. So I've been going through it. A lot of it is posters. And uh, it was, the lunacy of me is unbelievable. I'm just a fucking lunatic, man. And the more I can talk about that on stage and find the funny in it, the better I'm going to get because I am fucking out of my mind. And I don't even know how I make it through each day. Just like fucking crazy. So I'm going through my poster tubes. I got like 40 poster tubes that I've carted around between five fucking apartments. And then while I was living in New York, they went into storage and this is how long I've had these posters. A lot of them have my old San Francisco address on the posters. I would just buy shit, never open it up because I didn't want it to get fucking bent or, or, or creased or any of that shit. I want my artwork mint so I can take it down to get framed. And when I buy a house one day, a big house, I'll have it loaded with all these cool posters and you'll come in and you'll be like, wow, dude, you fucking did some shit. I was talking to my neighbor a couple days ago and he's like, you know, a lot of people's houses have stuff from their past, but they don't have anything from now. And that kind of hit me. You know, you go in someone's house and you see who they used to be or what they were into, but they don't have any like current uh, things that kind of uh, represent them. And I was like, yeah, that's fucking pretty interesting, you know, because yeah, a lot of people do like, I, you know, I load up with dumb shit. Like I gotta have that evil Knievel doll. I had one when I was a kid. I am wiping all of that away. And I'm telling you, if this stuff wasn't worth some money, I would just throw it away. And I would be instant minimalist. 
but I respect it too much. It's beautiful, cool posters and photos and um, stuff like that. I took so a box of a uh, shit down to Rockaway, which is a rock memorabilia place here in LA. And they bought some of the stuff. They I got about 500 bucks from them and it's some old laminates. I had a bunch of fuck. I used to have like fucking 200 laminates just on a doorknob to a bathroom. Every time you open the fucking bathroom, all the laminates. Um, so they bought some laminates. I had a giant Guns N' Roses Chinese democracy kind of era um, poster, which by the way, Guns N' Roses just released a new song, Perhaps, Perhaps, Perhaps I Was Wrong, Hi, Hi. Um, so this is their third tune. They, where they have Absurd and Hard School and now Perhaps. They're all obviously tracks from the Chinese democracy era, re-recorded or reworked, but I'm still looking forward to them maybe getting in the studio and writing something as a band. I'm not quite sure why that hasn't happened. And maybe, maybe the chemistry isn't there anymore for writing as a band. You know, I mean, there's some bands have that where they, they had that fucking nucleus and exploding lightning in a bottle thing. And then they try and they're like, Oh, let's just, rework some of these tunes i don't know what it is but i do know that um that uh these are the chinese democracy uh outtakes and stuff like that there's still some good stuff on chinese democracy it didn't get a lot of uh a lot of love and it, it was like 29 years in the making or whatever it was but uh I like better and stuff like that. And, and perhaps it's cool. I was talking to Kevin on the uh, Instagram zoom, uh, sorry, the zoom live. And he really liked it. It's got kind of a illusions era, kind of yesterday's kind of vibe. And um, I liked absurd. I thought it was weird. Absurd. Da, 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 absurd. I'm just singing like a dick today all over this podcast. <laughs> anyway. So uh, congrats on getting another track out. And uh, that that's pretty fucking cool. Got another song from them and they're playing it on the radio and uh, new GNR, you know? Anyway, so I've been selling this rock memorabilia and I didn't even know what the fuck was in these tubes. It's been so long, they weren't labeled. So for three days during the day, I would just open up the tubes, uh, take pictures of the shit, and and be blown away like wow look at this i can there was there's shit in my collection i didn't even know i fucking had there's a giant amazing uh photo i can't make out who the photographer is cuz the 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 writing the signature is not recognizable to me it's not a jim marshall it's not a baron woolman it's not uh a mick rock i can't really make it out but it's a a huge photo of the stones on the 72 tour it's mick taylor jagger keith richards and right behind him is charlie and it's beautiful i was like wow i didn't even fucking remember having that all of this stuff i didn't remember what it was until i opened it up but one of the tubes i opened up was this incredible it was three posters from the Andrew Wood documentary, Malfunction. And I looked at them, they were signed to me from the, from the director of the documentary. Now, if you have not seen uh, Mother Love Bone's Andrew Wood documentary called Malfunction, it came out, I don't know, maybe 10 years ago or something. It is fantastic. And I stared at it, the poster for a while, spelled my name wrong, D-E-L-R-E-Y, classic so i'm like ah uh. <laughs> but i remember regan got him for me the drummer from brad and uh so i'm staring at it and i just it just immediately threw me into a mother love bone uh rabbit hole again there i am it's just fucking adhd or add or whatever the one the many uh, brain dysfunctions I have 
And I opened up the poster and next thing you know, for the next hour, I'm just watching videos and listening to Andrew Wood and Mother Love Bone again. And just exactly in the same frame of mind, I was the first day I heard him. And that was this fucking band kills. And that's all I kept fucking thinking all that day, listening to the Apple and thinking what a masterpiece record this is. It is insane how good Mother Love Bone was. And it's wild to think how they went on to become Pearl Jam after Andrew died and they're huge. But man, that Love Bone was something that was just fucking cool. Just that flavor of Elton John meets Seattle grunge, dark druggy music. Unbelievable. Bone China. This is Shangri-La. It is, it is incredible. The artwork that Jeff did for the record, the mix, the sound, the recording, the record plant recorded right there in Sausalito. Unreal, man. And the posters are just fucking cool because he's just pure rock and roll. He had that David Lee Roth kind of, uh, uh, you know, vibe of all the clothing that he wore. He loved to dress rock and roll, which was so out at that time. You know, you you wanted to dress down, not full regalia of just, you know, waving your rock and roll flag. But he didn't give a fuck. Big glasses, furry jackets, uh, you know, flowery pants. And it's just total David Lee Roth looking uh, kind of eat him and smile era Roth, you know, like, what the fuck? This is... This is great. Anyway, so it was really cool to uh, to see these posters and everything. I got. I've been slowly posting it up on Instagram and in my stories. If anybody wants to buy anything, I'll send it out to you. I just want to. Uh, I want it to go somewhere cool. And there's a lot of good stuff there. There's some uh, beautiful, rare Tom Waits posters. Really rare. There is a. Uh, 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 some killer Angus photography, some photos. There is, uh, I even got some giant fucking Disneyland posters of rides. They're huge. I bought those years ago. Like, oh man, this would be cool to have in my house. The Haunted Mansion poster, you know? But anyway, you can reach out to me. I can send photos of different stuff I have and I'll, I'll mail it out to you. It's hard to get rid of this rock memorabilia. I'm trying to get down to fucking nothing. I want to get down to my t-shirts, my glasses, and my, my sneakers and boots. And that's it, man. I want to just get crazy minimal. 57, I'm going to be 58. And uh, man, you never know what's going to happen. I had a friend over the weekend, 58 years old, had a stroke. Fucking brutal. Crazy shit, man. Crazy shit, my friends. So I want you to load your fucking apartment up with a bunch of shit. Reach out. <laughs> oh, I'm even selling what, what I'm selling a, a dude wipe bidet I just found over here. <laughs> I got a dude wipe bidet. This fucking house, it, it's going to look like a goddamn fucking swap meat. Swap meat. Um, anyway. Uh, a couple more things, and then uh, I hope to see you guys out at the live shows. Tour dates are at deandelray.com. I was at the uh, Coffee Bean this morning, and a uh, stroke song came on last night. And it immediately hit me. I was like, these guys have a goddamn classic. The song's like fucking million years old now. And anytime I hear it, I just go, this is a masterpiece song immediately it, it is a it is a uh it's a classic rock song now classic rock it's 20 years old or whatever whenever it came out but anytime i hear last night by the strokes and even though it's their hit their their first big hit i still love it a lot of bands their first hit i don't dig anymore like i, I never never need to hear satisfaction by the stones of course i don't need to hear that but when i hear uh, the Strokes, last night, man, it puts me in a fucking great mood because it immediately reminds me of uh, when I first uh, start 
coming back to LA playing gigs and realizing people were wearing leather jackets and playing guitars again. I was like, this is fucking cool. And uh, that fucking record and that song just crush. Which, by the way, when I was going through my stuff, I just found this beautiful strokes photo that uh, a photographer sent over to me. And it's them, like, looks like they're just in high school. They're just like fucking so young and and ready to take on the world. Like, all right. And um, yeah, so the <laughs> fucking song is great. I'm kind of all over the board on this podcast today. I just fucking, you know, it's just kind of crazy. Somebody, somebody, uh, they, uh, they tweeted at me. What's with these fucking solo episodes? It's bullshit. You used to interview fucking stars. This show sucks now. <laughs> I love somebody all angry. Like, God forbid you change. Fuck you. I don't like you. And I was like, good. Go home. Go home, move on, as uh, James Hetfield would say. Move on. Solo episodes are fun, man. I love doing them. And uh, they're just fucking squirrely. I don't know where I'm going to go. I put down some bullet points. I get ready to talk about stuff. It takes me a little while to even start doing it because I'm like, all right, I got to fucking get ready and uh, turn this mic on and, and go for it. The weekend was the anniversary also of uh, Woodstock. And I always love to celebrate Greg Raleigh on that weekend. My good friend, Greg Raleigh. I'll never forget when he did the podcast for the 50 year anniversary of Woodstock. It meant the world to me in New York City. Great. But it got me thinking uh, about the other bands that played there. And one was Jefferson Airplane. And I was like, where the fuck is Grace Slick? So I just tweeted that where's grace slick at anybody know you know and then i got a an army of uh, of tweets and dms people tell me oh she paints she doesn't you know play music anymore i go i know she doesn't play music anymore because i fucking i'm alive i listen to music i have not seen she's she is one of the people i would love to podcast with because she just stepped out of the business and never came back. No bogus reunion tours, no uh, fake Jefferson airplanes, none of that, man. There's a fake starship out there, whatever airplane out there, somebody's singing her part, but she didn't take part in any of that. And it is interesting to see somebody step out and never look back. And some people would be like, what the fuck? What's wrong with her? And other people are like, hey, good for her, man. You know, she played rock and roll and then she got out. You know how fucking rare that is? Nobody usually gets out unless it's in a fucking wood box. If you think about that, no one steps away from rock and roll until they die or they can't sell tickets anymore. But if they can do a little bit of tickets, they get, you know, they're addicted to that fucking, that performing, or they got like six divorces, or they got ripped off from the record company and they need to do it for a living. But it's very rare. I mean, look at the Rolling Stones. They are loaded. Metallica's loaded. The Who is loaded. U2 is loaded. They still go out. But Grace Slick said see ya and men would i'd like to talk to her about that now i'm pretty sure she's probably angry out there about the old business and the old world or whatever from my I, I i i to my recollection my recollection there would be once in a while kind of angry little spats or maybe i dream that up i don't know but Grace Slick, you know, maybe she can't sing anymore and she doesn't want to go out there and you know, tune down the songs or whatever. I don't know what it is, but congrats, man. If you're happy and you're out of rock and roll and you're happy with your decision, fucking ballsy, man. Because I don't ever see it. I would never step away from comedy. I would have to be just, you know, 
death or no tickets or no bookings. I mean, you know, that's, that's the big scary thing of comedy. I'm always begging for bookings. Like, God damn, I got to get booked, you know, uh, headlining dates, trying to get further and further in the career, but I wouldn't stop. Uh, but I think that's because I started so late in life. I wouldn't play music right now. That's for sure. Uh, so I can understand uh, where she's coming from, where you do something for a long time and then you walk away. People always ask me, how'd you quit music? Why don't you still do music? You should still do music. And it's like, no, man, I did it. You ever done anything for fucking 25 years, let alone five years? I, I'm good. I played music. It was fucking fun. I'll do it once in a while with my good friends for a little Bon Scott shit. That's fucking incredibly fun to me. But to fire up a band in this day and age? Oh, no fucking way, man. No way. It is just brutal, my friends. Brutal on all different levels. Your hearing, your body, your fucking, your, your wallet. <laughs> it's a great slick, man. I hope one day to maybe talk to her. And, uh, you know, a lot of fucking San Francisco history there, man. One of the great, great fucking bands, Jefferson Airplane. Unbelievable how cool they were. I was telling the story one time that uh, I was in my band. We were playing. We were rehearsing out in this old chicken farm coop thing. We took mushrooms and there was uh, some guy turned in his uh, chicken coops into rehearsal studios so there's other bands and we took mushrooms and we played white rabbit for about three hours and finally some band knocked on the door and they're like what the fuck are you guys doing <laughs> i mean we we're just in there boom 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 one bam makes you smaller just fucking frying on some of the best mushrooms man it was i'll tell you what it was just epic to keep playing that tune and just looking at each other like man i get it white rabbit it's fucking it's just deep dude <laughs> well gotta get out of here i love you let me make sure i got everything here oh one last thing I saw a thing on Instagram that uh, scented candles are toxic. Now, I don't want to burn any candles. They, they said they're loaded with petroleum. All these years, scented candles are awful for you. And I've been huffing them down for years. It'd be awful if I died from uh, scented candle death. But uh, anyway, uh, I just wanted to throw that out there. I don't know if it's true or, or propaganda. But there's an Instagram thing where the guy just said these scented candles are just brutal for you. So I'll leave you with that little fucking nugget. Hope to see you at the shows. I'll be at the Comedy Store all this week and and uh, Flappers and uh, maybe the Improv. Not sure yet. Don't forget about the tour dates. La Jolla Comedy Store and uh, Utah Boxcar Comedy. Madison Square Garden with Burr and Funny Pages at uh colorado springs candles lit happy birthday robert plant i love all you guys thanks for tuning in and don't forget to subscribe on my youtube channel and please leave a review on the itunes i know i ask all the time but it fucking helps it helps see ya